Hey everyone, I'm in Los Angeles right now and I'm walking down Holloway. Actually, behind me is where Salminia was murdered in 1976. Actually behind those buildings, not in the front on Holloway, but actually behind them. I'll, I'll tell you that story another time. But before Dearly Departed tours shut permanently, uh, the last tour I put together I called the Homicide Tour and it involved, oh my god, decapitations, mutilations, uh, uh, severed heads, and even a plane crash. I mean, that's how dramatic it was. And it was like five miles, the route. I mean, <laughs> so I'm, I decided I'm gonna take you on uh, some of the murder tour, the homicide tour today. Uh, and maybe we'll do a deep dive on some of these stories later on. But you're gonna get a taste for the, the old homicide tour that I offered at the end of Dearly Departed Tours. So sit back and rest in peace. So this is Holloway, this is rush hour. According to Shelly Winters, her and Marilyn used to share that apartment up there. And I know for a fact, and I'll tell you more about this another time, Salminio was murdered in the alley behind these buildings. You can see how it goes through all the way. And he was murdered in, uh, just outside a carport in his alley. And that was unsolved for a while. I think it was a year and a half. But I'm here because this story that was on the murder tour is, again, <laughs> it's insane. It's, it has all the elements of a horror movie. Mayhem, which is a, an expression used for extreme behavior. And tonight, Jeff, there is still a huge police presence out here. Take a look. They've got this building locked down as they continue to look for clues and evidence. And tonight, we're hearing from neighbors that the victim's mother knew something was wrong and asked police to come here to check on her daughter. This is a recent photo of Yana Kazian as she sat on her balcony. The 30-year-old just gave birth four weeks ago. Today, she was found dead inside the bedroom of her apartment. The cause of death, blunt force trauma to the head. And I believe it was this one, is what they, uh, it was illustrated in the news. But her name was Yana Kazian, and she was 30 years old. She had just given birth to her, her and Blake Liber was his, was his name to their child and uh, her mother had come to stay with them to take care of the child and thankfully actually the mother had the child at the time and Blake Label Libel had uh, it was May 26 2016 Cajun was 30 years old two months earlier had given birth to their baby on entering the apartment they found Label barricaded behind a bedroom door and a mutilated and deceased body of Cassian in the bed. And I'll tell you the description now. But they called him the West Hollywood Vampire. This is straight from the script. Iana had a phone conversation with her mother two days earlier, and that was the last time anyone heard from her. Concerned, her mother called 911, and the police arrived to the apartment for a welfare check. They forced the front door open and immediately saw blood spatter and flesh on the walls and floor. In the bedroom on the bed was the body covered in a red Mickey Mouse blanket. They lifted the blanket. Iana's body appeared to have been washed thoroughly and drained almost completely of blood. Her scalp, right ear, and most of her right cheek were torn from her head. The autopsy confirmed that she was alive for at least eight hours after that injury. Bruises were found on her neck, throat, arms, forearms, and hands. Bite marks were found on her body. Blake Libel, the boyfriend, was found barricaded in another room and was arrested. It was established that he used a paring knife in his bare hands to commit the mutilation of Iana. Prosecutors claimed that he was jealous of the attention Iana gave to their newborn. In June of 2018, Libel was found guilty of first-degree murder with supplemental charges of torture and mayhem, and is sentenced to life in prison.
this building, I used to call this building, I used to call this story, the gay insane murder, because it's gay and it's insane. Uh, the killing happened in the couple's West Hollywood apartment on Palm Avenue. The victim, Kurt Limba, a 34-year-old doctor. Detectives say the couple was having issues regarding allegations of infidelity. Today, David said he had taken prescription pills and was tired. That led to the couple arguing and they became aggressive with each other. And it took place in apartment 309 of this building. Kirtland Ma was an emergency room doctor. He shared this apartment with the extremely jealous and unstable boyfriend, Andre Davids. Kirtland intended to end the relationship, and after not hearing from him, Kirtland's sister contacted authorities and asked them to do a welfare check. The first thing they discovered was the jealous boyfriend locked in the bathroom. Upon opening the door, they found him on the floor with self-inflicted cuts. But they looked in the kitchen and found Kirtland Ma. Kirtland was lying on the floor. His shirt was pulled up and his shorts pulled down to his knees. His stomach was covered with a towel. Multiple items had been scattered on top and around Ma, including pills, marijuana, kitchen utensils, paper, and pens. His intestines, a piece of a kidney, and the head of this penis was found on the floor next to him. Near his left hip was a small kitchen knife. Upon removing the towel, they were shocked to find several items, including loose pills, prescription bottles, and burned money shoved inside him through a deep cut in his torso. His heart had been turned inside out and shoved in his mouth. His scrotum was resting on his right cheek. His testicles were removed from the scrotum and both testicles were stuffed in his throat under the heart. A piece of the scalp was found on the floor. A kitchen knife with a curved blade was found on the table in the bedroom. A large chef's knife was found in the bathtub where the suspect was found. The boyfriend, Andre Davids, was found guilty of voluntary manslaughter. Since Davids killed Ma because of a sudden quarrel or in the heat of passion, his sentence was for voluntary manslaughter and he was given a 12-year sentence. A week later, there was another stabbing in this building. Three people were injured, another man was shot and killed by a deputy. Maybe that's the actual house. Looks like it's probably it, huh? Yeah. And there's the telephone. I'm just gonna read this story. Tragic end for a woman found dead, barricaded in a closet. No one knows how long Carol Fuller scratched and clawed for her life, trapped in the bedroom closet of her West Hollywood home. All homicide detectives could say Thursday was that Fuller, 72, was dead, probably of dehydration or starvation, and that her life out beside one of the city's busiest intersections was so solitary that it took a month or more to find that anyone to notice that she was actually gone. The stylish widow, whom my neighbors described as a diva and an Italian eccentric, had been thrown in her closet sometime in December or January by someone who ransacked and robbed her well-kept bungalow. Authority said, the intruder left the closet door barricaded, trapping her inside. It was not until a concerned neighbor called out sheriff's deputies and went in to check early Thursday and found the body. What they also found was evidence of a desperate struggle to survive. The inside of the closet door had been splintered, gouged, and was stained with blood apparently from fingers that were cut by the frantic attempt to break free. Fuller was not tied up or dead, but she was apparently could not make herself heard above the din of the traffic that rushes almost around the clock past Santa Monica Boulevard and Crescent. In the weeks since she died, many neighbors wondered what had become of the independent woman who had been a fixture for years outside her Spanish style.
where she'd like to water and tend her lawn and plants. Her son supposedly lives in Orange County, but no one knows what became of him. The mail carrier canceled deliveries when too much mail was left uncollected. The woman across the street wondered where she was, but she did not want to meddle. Starwood a nightclub was over here. Eddie uh, Nash's old place. And over there was where Lily St. Sears lingerie shop was. But this is where Carol Fuller lived for decades and ultimately died and sat on discovery in a closet for months. This is back in 1995. As I'm turning, I've shown this before on a different video, but that orange building on the corner you see right there used to be the Callanan Mortuary. And I did that in one of my, I think it was my first matchbook video. That's the mortuary that handled Bing Crosby. And also handled Divine. Sorry, that was a quick drive-by. And also, uh, Shalimar, that uh, the uh, person that Eddie Murphy picked up and was arrested for soliciting a prostitute, Shalimar, whose real name is Antison, Antison Suli, I think was his name, uh, was, they say, going to write a book or something, and mysteriously fell off the top of a five-story apartment building. Go figure. December 2011, a guy by the name of Tyler Brem. He was uh, a young guy, changed his Facebook status from um, in a relationship to single. Then he pulled a, uh, a 40 caliber and literally walked down the street shooting at people. There was somebody in that building, in that tall green building, which is the building from Earthquake, by the way, the Lauren Green office building in Earthquake. Uh, that's a uh, people there was somebody up in there going trying to distract them I guess but there was a movie shoot nearby and there's a, they hire off-duty cops to protect movie shoots and so when the call went out the off-duty cops responded pretty quickly not before um, before he shot a guy by the name of John Attenberry who was a producer and uh, he, he injured at least two people the cops responded pretty darn quickly and Tyler Brown was down right in front of that green wall and he was taking downtown to the coroner's office and Troy assisted with his autopsy. Yes, he did. There's a story. I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever tell that story, but it's true. Troy is a dark horse. Fairfax High School is at the end of that street. And it was June of 2003 that the students were there watching a game on the athletic field. And they, they heard a plane uh, in the sky. And the plane was sort of not sounding right. And they turned to look and the plane was actually spiraling from the sky. And landed in that apartment building right there. A single engine plane nose dived into the building, crashing through all three floors and igniting a massive fire. 100 gallons of aviation fuel bursting into flame. Finally, the plane crash story. But first, I want to say thank you to the people who are supporting my page by the Patreon or the PayPal link below. Your support means everything and i really appreciate it because you keep this stuff going especially lovely ann meyer christian esser crystal brinkman miss marquand jason abram cmc farrell robert hernandez and the continued support of buddy mills jeff kidd and mary lucas my carpenter friend it was a cloudy day, June 9, 2003, when a Bonanza Beechcraft plane took off at 3.45 p.m. from Santa Monica Airport, destined for Sun Valley, Idaho. The pilot was Jeffrey Siegel, and on board was his niece, Jessica Kaplan, and Tony and Bonnie Vintieri from Marina del Rey. Fifteen minutes after takeoff, with visibility being poor, the pilot became disoriented, and the single-engine plane began to spiral. 
Only 25 yards from this building is Fairfax High School, and on the athletic field, about 100 students and athletes heard the plane and turned to see it plunging nose down into this three-story apartment complex, coming to rest in the building's basement parking garage. Flames mushroomed through the roof. The bodies of the passengers were burned beyond recognition, and positive ID had to be done with dental charts and post-mortem x-rays. There were several injuries on the ground, but there was only one fatality in the building, and that was 76-year-old watch repairman Tibor Reese. When the plane hit, he was sitting in his lounge chair in his third-story apartment, and that's exactly the way he was found in the wreckage. Because of the proximity and time to the World Trade Center and the predominantly Jewish population of this neighborhood, police initially sent in counterterrorism, hazardous materials, and bomb squad units. But after the investigation, it was determined that the crash was an accident and turned it over to the NTSB. It was learned during the autopsy that the pilot had cocaine and alcohol in his system. The crash was determined to be pilot error. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time. You heard me.